This is a subarctic beekeeper, one of the many living on a small farm north of Fairbanks, Alaska in the subarctic region of the United States. We are done with summer. We are in fall. It's a very quick transition. If you've seen any of the other videos, you can tell by the leaves behind me that are changing. As usual, I've got my equipment behind me. Tuck things in so I don't trip. The light is changing, coming between the trees now instead of directly overhead. This is a colony that was just inspected by the National Honey Bee Survey people, wonderful people. They come out every year and sample my bees, wax, bee bread, propolis. I say wax. Look for mites, viruses, diseases, etc. And this study is done all over the United States in every state. I don't know if every state participates, but there is money for every state. So if your state doesn't participate, encourage them to do so because the more data that we have, the better. It's wasp season. And I don't know if you can see this little bugger. They're after the dead bees because they use the protein from the bees to feed their young. I don't want them reproducing. I can't do a thing about it other than use my waffle spatula and play whack a wasp and do what I can to prevent them taking up shop here. The bees have been going through the syrup like crazy. They're very hungry. I have changed their feed from one cup sugar to one and a half cups water to two cups sugar, one cup water. This is a much thicker syrup. It takes longer to make. It takes longer to dissolve that sugar. That mixture mimics honey. The queen will start slowing down and the bees will start putting up reserves. If you're wondering why I still have honey supers on, it's because these colonies have gotten so large that the deep box is not enough room for them. But our temperatures are going down at night and I don't want to add another deep box because it adds more dead air space. So they haven't filled up their honey supers with honey been a couple of frames but not much there is nectar in them so I'm leaving on for extra space and letting them feed off the nectar so as usual my process begins putting the lid next to me cleaning out the feeder but you know what's cool is that this syrup in here is warm from the body heat of the bees they generate a lot of Heat on their own. I got some wasps in there that have drowned. Uh oh. Huh. Darn. Wasps are a pain in the butt. They're aggressive. They eat the bees. They can sting repetitively and it hurts. Hurts, hurts, hurts much more than a honeybee sting, in my opinion. Got nailed a few times, more than a few times. Got a big bald faced hornet in here. So I want to get these dead bees out of here. Normally, I wouldn't have dead bees in my top feeder, but I have this year. And I assume it's because of things I've added to my syrup to make it more desirable. The jury's out. I've got a lot of brood in these colonies. The National Honey Bee Survey people were here a few days ago. And we went through the hives. We just saw tons of brood. Those are going to be my winter bees. I am not a smoker. <laughs> but then again, I am with the bees sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I got to let them know I'm here so they're not shocked. I do do it lightly often, most times, but we got these wasps going on in here. Boy, those little shits can just wreck a day. They walk right into the hives, they'll behead the honeybees and carry the bodies off. As you can see, I'm flinging these dead honeybees into the weeds here, the beautiful weeds. 
because I want them out of the way. Got a lot of propolis in here, this is good. I'll ask the National Honeybee Survey if they'll let me post the video I took from their visit. It's cool to see. Really nice people. I'm going to set this on the lid. Bending at the knees. So, all the bees that are down there are stuck. Thank goodness. Tons of propolis and wax. That's great for plugging up holes. It is not so great for lifting up a queen excluder. The queen in here is from last year, so she's a red queen. It is about 75 degrees out right now, bizarrely warm. It's 7 p.m. on Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. I want these bees to go down. I did clean out my sprayer, and so I can spray them, and it's warm enough. The benefit of that is they can't fly at me, and they get a little nummy numb. I swear to God, I just cleaned this thing. <laughs> because it wasn't working during the last video. I'll try another few times here. And, 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 uh, shh. Quiet the mind. See the smoke, watch the bees. So, bees are up at the top again. I need to remove this queen excluder. Full of propolis and wax. I think it's because of what I've been feeding them. I think. I've never seen any amount this prolific ever in all my hives. Makes it a little bit harder to loosen. I like the plastic ones better. These do not clean easily. I'd rather spend my time tending to the bees than replacing equipment, building equipment, cleaning equipment. Why am I concerned with this right now? Because of that sticky queen excluder. And I have to remove it to get into these frames. There's some frames in here I have marked that I need to remove. The brood may be hatching or hatched, and I need to find that out because then the backfill starts. They have about a month, well, more than a month. These, these gals will get put into the bee barn when the temperature during the day is consistently 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to be adding pollen patty, syrup, and fondant. I checked the weather all the time. Checked it for the month. I wish I had a J-hook right now. I ordered some. Anyways, the report says that we're supposed to have temperatures like this throughout the month of September, which is highly unusual. I had to go outside last night at 2 in the morning because one of our four-leggeds needed to go out. You see how many bees are in here? And we had frost. This is full of honey. Some of it capped, some of it uncapped. I need to find the queen. Beautiful dark pollen in here from the Thessalia and the poppies. They're hungry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang them. See, watch what the shake does. It's not great for me. It's just not. It works for others. Consistently does not work well for me. I got a super seizure cell here. I'm going to put this over in a box I have here with the lid on it. So much propolis. You can see the dry feed right here, the dry pollen substitute. They've been going through about two cups a day. It's a lot. I know last year on this day it was raining and cold. I just want to show you these frames. This is what happens when you get good queens. 
good genetics. These frames are full of bees. That's what I want going into winter. Full frames of bees. You've got a supersedure cell here. We're not sure why. She's doing an outstanding job. You've got a whole lot of activity growing here. I'm going to do the pound. This has some brood on it. Lots of drone comb. Couple super seeder cells. Next, we've got a frame that's empty. I'm still trying this sprayer. I swear it'll work. I swear if we just keep trying the same thing over and over again in the same fashion, it'll work, right? No, it won't. So with those two frames out, I do have some room to move around. I'm gonna do a hive check. Of course, looking at behavior, making sure that they're not doing anything weird, that they're all working together. Nobody's fighting anybody, like on the deck. Nobody looks sick, nobody's stumbling around. I don't see any signs of deformed wing virus, it's great. These colonies have been treated for mites, of course. They all have. A couple times. I read something recently that said that we need to get used to the idea of mites being a part of our colonies. It's no longer just a hive of bees, it's a hive of bees and mites. Because it's impossible to get rid of all of them. That was a little disparaging. Tell that to New Zealand. So many bees. The honey that they have put up here is made from the nectar and pollen in the environment. It has more moisture in it than what I want them to have going into winter. We want them to not have to defecate. Look at all those bees. Aren't they lovely? Holy crow. Seems we've had a hatching. Got another super seeder cell. Wow. I'm not understanding why I don't... I would think they'd be making swarm cells by the size of this colony. There's honey on this, and I'm going to take it. It's been a, a, a poor year for honey. I don't see the queen on here. I suspect we haven't had much honey due to the rain and the wind, which is also unusual. I've got brood and a beautiful queen cell. Right here. It's a beauty. And it is ready. She's ready. This is a great genetics. I'm going to put this frame aside. What I can do is take the nurse bees that are on this frame and this beautiful queen cell and stick it in the new hive right over here that doesn't have a queen. Although, I need to check and see if there's larva eggs and everything else on here. There's brood, there's larva, there are eggs, and there's a queen cell. That's excellent. So there will be different stages of bees in that hive. Wonderful. That's ideal. I, this weather is great for mating, although if it gets cloudy, rainy, and lumpy again, that's not going to be so great. So I might get a virgin queen out of that cell, but she might not have time to mate, and she might not be able to start laying, but I'm going to take my chances, because this hive has been queenless for a long time. Full of bees. If you want to find an easy way to count your bees, there's a page called DaveCushman.net. DaveCushman.net. Mr. Cushman has passed away, but people are maintaining his site. And he has 
a method for counting bees by looking at how many bees are covering your frames. It's pretty cool. Going into where the brood nest should be, although she's laying all over, it'd be pretty cool if the September queen starts laying. Could happen. She could hatch tomorrow. Got a good hum going in here. Tell me we don't have good bees, huh? Look at that. They're gorgeous. Lots of brood. <laughs> More queen cells. Why, ladies, why? When you've got such a great queen in here. What I don't want to happen is a new virgin queen to hatch and kill my prolific queen. That would be horrible. Holy crow. I've got, I've got, holy crow, four fully ready queen cells on this frame. Four, plus one in there. I do have some queen mating nukes, and it looks like that's what will have to happen here. I still need to find my red queen. Loyal to the red queen. Got some solid black bees in here. Very cool. These bees are just kicking it. I have my phone on me, and I often use it to take pictures of what I'm seeing in the hives, so I can record it later in my app, my beekeeping app. Difficult to press my code in here with these gloves on. Wow, this is a giant queen cell. Big, big, big. You know what that means? She's been getting fed a lot. So, holy crow, I've never seen a queen cell this big. She is gigantic. I could do a split. This late in the season is tricky though. Holy crow. This is a cell with eggs, larva, capped brood, queen cells. Okay, I don't see the queen on here. They're moving real slow. Now you can see the queen cells. You couldn't before. You can zoom in. If I could put these frames full of brood, larva, queens, the whole bit in the same colony, I wouldn't have to worry about anyone getting to know each other. They'd already be familiar with each other. This colony has enough bees in it to do well. So many bees. More brood. No queen cells on this one. Big daddy drones though. I've got three frames over here that have all the ingredients for a really nice split. And then also have extra uh, queen cells. They're drawing out comb on this one late in the year. I haven't seen the queen yet. That doesn't mean I haven't bypassed her. But I wanna be really gentle because if I'm gonna steal these frames then I don't want to leave this hive vulnerable. It's been one of my strongest hives. See some lytle dancing going on? It's great. My queen is embedded 
with the other ladies here somewhere. She was here two days ago. I'm going to put this colony back together. They're already festooning. They're looking good. I'm going to reach over really slow. You really generally want to try to avoid reaching over, but you got to do it sometimes, you know? All right. I'm going to put this hive together using the frames that I've spun. I've got three frames in here with nurse bees and all my good stuff for splits. I need to find three more frames. I've got some empty frames in that hive, I think, that I could use. And I'm going to make a September split. That queen cell is the biggest I've ever seen. What do you do? I still have the bees uh, that are in the honey super. I want to get the bees from the top box into the bottom box. And so I will do that now and brush them in and shake them in. Well, I've got space here. Almost done. The bees are not happy. At least they hadn't been sprayed, so they're not wet. Someone out there is watching this and going, oh my god, why does she keep banging frames? Because that way the bees go down into the hive. Least amount of contact from me. I'd rather have the frames be damaged than the bees. there's less flying around after the beekeeper slam so since I'll be making this split so late in the season I'm gonna have to be keeping a very close eye on it find out when those queens hatch either that or separating them and putting some of the queens and some mating nukes and keeping the biggest queen for the split, which is probably what I will do. I, my queens, my red queens have made a lot of green queens this year. I just wish they had done it earlier in the season when I needed them. But I will never say no to a great queen. I'm going to push all the frames to the left. That's how I will know next time I come in here that I need to add some more frames pretty quickly. Otherwise, they'll start building burr comb. And I don't want that, and I don't want the dead air space. So, take care of yourselves, take care of your bees and your hives and your colonies. Root for Ukraine. Having a bit of Ukrainian blood maybe makes me more angry about it. I don't know, everyone should be angry about it. Regardless, take care of yourselves, take care of your bees, and I'll see you later. This video is copyrighted and all rights reserved. Bye.